The Titans' early exit from the Summer Showdown presented a quick opportunity for redemption as they took on the Paris Eternal in the first of a two-game weekend. Were the Eternal set on continuing their role after winning the Summer Showdown, or were the Titans up to the challenge? I'm Abby Sherlock, and in Titans this week, we'll find out about this match, as well as a match against the LA Gladiators. Losing to the Eternal 3-1 in a meta that suited Paris' playstyle was a hard loss to swallow, but left the Titans motivated as they were presented at a chance to make up for their loss with a rematch. Heading into the series, the Titans looked to capitalize off the hero pool bans of the week. Without Widowmaker in the pool, XC would be forced off his favorite hero, opening up the opportunity for Shockwave to play Echo without the worries of being shot down by a long-range sniper. Another key hero that is out of this week's hero pool is Ana. Without Ana, Paris will struggle to pull off their meta-dominating strategy of running Genji with a Nanoblade boost. Sparkle's ability to work in tandem with Exe would be disrupted by the latest hero pool, but would that be enough for the Titans to take advantage of? Let's find out in our Titans recap. Yeah, I mean, Junkrat got a little bit of a buff too. I mean, there's a lot of patch notes that Watchpoint covered expertly, and early on, Paris just rolls over. That is some oh, mean. play two, a deflect to the Horny Genji's at half HP. Might not be able to get anything done. Soon cleans him up. It's built up a high noon too. This looks all over for the Titans. Haven't got much left in their tank. The high noon eventually comes through. The shadow goes wide. Shockwave goes down, and that should just be it. The Eternal cleaning off the Titans, and they're going to take control center. About as one's already got 70% on the all, but really it's Soon who's just cracking shield. Again, very much like last time, the shield crack ability of Paris Eternal is supreme, and Doomfist is not going to help out with that, but you supplement it by running a Symmetra, and you still win the shield battle. God, a shockwave. What are you doing in the back line? He tried to go for some XE style flank, but didn't end up uh, making it work. Sparkles earned himself a Meteor Strike as well. And uh, I want to point out what FD God just did a couple of seconds ago as well. He was punching out the little barriers just to make sure. But still running the Genji. It's not gotten anything done. Well, there it is. Got to wait for that Coalescence to come out. But the beat is going to match Dalton. Dalton's high in the sky. He's in a little bit of trouble as well. Soon finds a double kill. A big shatter on the front line as well. And just like that, the team fights over. And the map might be over as well as the Paris Eternal clean house. And the Titans are sent all the way back to spawn. FD God finishes Karkar off with the boop. No one's going to be able to get back in time. And the Paris Eternal... Just a classic duel upon the Mega Pack. Sparkle taking a very aggressive angle, trying to get that Immortality kill down. A little bit too aggressive, though. Sparkle does manage to click on his head. Now, uh... Or Shockwave even managed to click on his head. Now Shockwave in the perfect position if you were an Ash. Oh, there's the Shadow from uh, Vembest. Oh, the, what, what was that? Like a 90 degree Shadow? Fakey? Okay. Shockwave's Bob's going to do a lot of work though. Sparkle goes down and Dalton using that blade. It's got a lot of armor stacking up though. Is the Rally Wash used from both FD God and Karka. Dalton almost invincible in this fight. He's still trying to do a little bit of work. Now there's relatively little healing as he mentioned. Yeah, Paris wins the economy during that fight. They don't end up using a lot. Fielder already has okay. Ant Matrix back up again. And with Yikes. Sigma going down, you'd have to think Paris is favored. Yeah, oh, someone please kill Dalton in the back. He is very low, but no, soon it's going to be fine. There's the blade. Perfect slash and dash on Karkar. A reset to kill Shockwave. That's a triple kill for Sparkle. And that's point one going over to Paris. However, double shield does kind of help and mitigate a lot of that. There's the Flux to start the fight out. Shreddog also has the Shadow and he crashes back down. KSA also using the ult. I love seeing a, a Sigma getting a Flux when uh, he's also using the Flux. That was a very quick team fight. I barely got my words out. Shockwave and uh, Dalton cleaning on up. He has to line up for it first. Oh my word! That's an aggressive position from Ben Best. Even more aggressive from Dalton. Right up in the sky. FD God has to get out of there ASAP. Feels like he didn't really need to use that blade as uh, Ben Best was already dead, but. You know, taking the team fight and instantly ending it and making sure you'll rest your DPS and tanks and get a little bit more ult charge as well by chasing. Best doorman impression. There's a Bob from Vancouver Titans as well. Ben Best has to get out of there rather fast. A huge shadow on the front. Oh, a counter shadow is massive from Ben Best. Oh, it looks so good, but it was too late. Dalton and Shredlock already. Here. They've got a Lucio and a Moira to be able to rock dead center. Soon just has to get this EMP. A nice solo kill though on Dalton. That is a perfect start, but a perfect rock as well. Hanbin ends up falling over. Blade for Sparkle kills Rolf. They might not even need the EMP if they can just do that. 
Flux or no Flux, Paris Eternal still make their way to the point and find the team kill as well. They build up the EMP and now they can hack the Wrecking Ball as he comes in. They didn't even need to do that. Uh, he's already nearing his ultimate too, and the ultimate is not all that great, except it's a beautiful escape and you can get someone down and immediately both supports down for Vancouver. This fight's over before it started. Yeah. Dalton at least has the uh, wall climbing ability to get out of there ASAP. There's a bit of Assassin's Creed and at least Styles of Comps comboing those two things together, but Rally with Bade. Rally can take a long time to build up, especially if you're not in the fight. There's the punch into the wall, rising up a cut straight through Rolf's immortality field, but soon ends up going down of all people. Sparkle can still carry this, however, as he's got the immortality field at his back. The blade for Dalton's good, though, with the help from the Bob. He slices and he dice and he finds absolutely nobody because Shredlock and Shockwave have already cleaned everybody up. You're just there to damage people and make the rest of your team look good, Dalton, in that situation. They got they got the tools to make it work. Oh, not anymore. Take it back. Take it back. Sparkle can just uh, just seismic slam on the ground like that. Anubis 2, by the way, as a Doomfist map, especially on the defense, is kind of ridiculous. The amount of... Uh, Sparkle jumps in, rising up a gut straight to his face, and he ends up falling. OT's ticking through. You know what's going to happen, though. The Paris Eternal are just going to be able to fend everybody else off. But you might as well touch for some additional time. And if you do find a pick, maybe it's winnable. But it's looking rather unlikely, especially when you're against a Sombra and even Sparkle with this Meteor Strike. OT ticks down and Paris the turns. They've exactly. got to make sure Shockwave doesn't get caught out again. This is the problem that they found themselves in last time around. But with Fielder falling, Paris Eternal, uh, it shouldn't matter to them all too much because they have a spawn advantage and it's just going to be dying on the payload to solve for some additional time. No step on that dynamite hump in, you're good. And they finally get the payload moving. But even has that meteor strike to make sure he can get out of dodge rather fast. Dalton very quickly bites the dust and that should just be it although they do get flux up in the air and even the bob doing a fair bit of damage yeah, close. Bob's doing a little bit more than a fair bit as he takes out fd god extremely close only one meter away a clutch flux from ksa make sure they a lot of these fights looking rather good for the titans a very late flux being used also they know there's only really one fight now for the paris eternal to come back a return flux for humpin mixed with that coalescence everybody's isolated shredlock Finally goes down. My word, he took a long time, and Han been cleaning up the rest. A very questionable late flux. It looked like Paris was on their way out. Vancouver could have held. Yeah, onslaught is the, the exact way to describe this. There's not been a concerted defense thus far from Vancouver. The blade oh, comes out though, gets one. He's so good, but the healing might have been better. Fildi using that coalescence managed to stay alive throughout the entirety of that, but FD God still ends up going down. Fielder luckily stays alive and Sparkle taken the fight into his own hands. A big EMP followed up with Sparkle's damage but might be all that they need. But a clutch beat from Karkar saves them from Sparkle and the Bob as well. Backing up the team when, he, when they most need them. However, a late beat from the Paris Eternal as they come back in. You see FD God flying from spawn. Hits four people with the beat and they clean up the fight. Paris Eternal hide and look at the free space they're now gaining. FD God just sitting on the payload all alone. One person's going to be able to touch it is Kaka. He needs to survive and get the beat to make sure his team can actually recontest once again. But there might not be anybody to actually give the beat to. Ben Best and Fielder kill off Dalton and Shredlock at the end. Flashbang's pretty good against both the DPS of Paris. Yeah, Sparkle's main goal here is to kill Shredlock at KSA. It's going to be a tough time, like you said. And there you go. KSA meets him up with the rock. Ben Best 2 caught out in the front line. Not, uh, not the hole they were really looking for there. Paris only managed to kill one, but still, you get another fight. Kind of swapping positions at this point. Now, Paris control the payload and the space around it. Titans get EMP'd, and that should just be it. Everybody falls over. And that was the extra fight we were talking about, as well as that payload not really moving. Which very quickly, whenever they win a fight, they win it dominantly. Oh, Blade for Sparkle in the back. Oh, he kills Dalton mid ult too. Oh, it's so good. Everybody crashes back down to earth. A quadra kill for Sparkle. Everybody's half each. Just how good he is. Cole, Shockwave going for the, the dangerous Genji. 75%, there's the blade. What a couple of dashes. He does get rocked. And remember, he will come out 100% 100 HP when he comes out of this ult. He's trying to get stuff done, and he does just that. FD God and Humbin. They end up falling as well as Sparkle off the back of it as well. The Paris still have a fight in the bank. Well, they're about to get EMP'd. The biggest question right now for Paris is how do you follow up the EMP? Oh, they're they going now. Nothing else left. Big EMP, though, gets two. Cole, yes. oh, soon instantly dies. That Coalescence is doing such work in the back, keeping everybody alive, and the EMP looks so good. 
Probably well, used fairly early. It's not the biggest uh, waste of cooldowns there, but you definitely want to. Go combo the nice orb shot. with the cold. Beautiful oh. shot. An instant headshot. If it was half HP too, mind you, maybe a little bit over, but instant kill. However, KSC does die to high noon of all things, but Darwin's still in the back line. Eventually gets cleaned up, but the damage might have already been done as the blade is pulled from Sparkle. Desperation! Desperation. As you see Shredlock just carving him up in the front line. There was no way he was going to be able to get more than uh, more than anything else done. Sparkle, I do or die now for the Titans. KSC. Getting the, uh, getting the flux off with the hammer down as well, but Shockwave wasn't really in position to follow up with any damage, and now he's found himself in no man's land. Spark ends up finishing off with the melee. Someone might be able to touch here, but it's looking rather unlikely. Coalescence coming out as well to force everybody back all the way to the spawn. FT God even has the beat. They have Blade, they have the EMP. They've got every single tool in the bank that they need to win a team fight, especially in OT. Vancouver Titans have got a mountain to climb, and I don't think they're even going to get up the first step. The Sparkle Blade is good enough to finish everybody else off. The Paris Eternal forcing everybody away, and they take the map and the series. With the loss, your Titans are still looking for an answer against an eternal team that many believe are now in the top tier of the league. The Titans were never able to play their game the way that they wanted, in a game where the Eternal seemed to have all the answers. The Eternal were just too strong as they outlasted and played very efficiently with their ultimates to win the marathon map. With another loss to the Eternal, the Titans had no time to reflect as they had to get ready for their second and final match of the weekend against the LA Gladiators. The Glads are another excellent benchmark team for the Titans as they sit mid-table and had a disappointing summer showdown themselves, losing in the qualifying rounds. Can the Titans continue their upward trend, or have they run out of gas playing Paris the night before? Let's go to our recap and find out. A lot of damage being pumped into either side, but OG will be the first blood. He goes down immediately. Birdering, opting to try and equalize it. The Shredlock will fall, and KSA ends up taking him south out, I believe, with his, uh, with his hypersphere, his accretion, I don't even know, but... At the end of the day, it feels like the Titans are on the back foot and off the back of these pickoffs. It should be the Gladiators' cap. Yeah, desperation time for the Titans. Blade. They need something huge, and there's no way. There's nothing to be done here. The blade is so clean. It gets a lot of work done, despite the fact that there was nothing to really sort of combo with it. No halts, no nanos. It does not matter for Kevster. He's able to clean up, and that's going to be the Gladiators in a very one-sided fashion, uh, taking that first round. In the and he's going to try and go for a couple of environmental kills. Okay, just swinging around the podium a little bit. OG getting booped off, but the kills, that's okay. Space has been created, and the Gladiators capitalize off the back of it. It's one thing for your main tank to die, but it's another to not even capitalize off the space that he does make. Gladiators, thankfully, he's using the space alongside Bird Ring so well. That's a great dive, though. Yeah. Much better for Vancouver as soon as they swap over to the Winston. Just the spam damage coming in from Shockwave. Two kills. All right, all right, showing us what you're made of here. Birdering's gonna try and clutch something up, but finally the peel comes through, so the heals. Now first fight. There's a, a couple of ultimates that are gonna be ready to come up here. Kevster's okay. blade being the first one, but Shockwave's gonna reply. And Shockwave's blades have been great when he's on the echo. Double Genji on the field? Okay, that's a little bit greedy, but tries to go for the blade in the end. Turned around though, thankfully. Rolf is there with the Coalescence to collect a couple of kills off the back of it, so it's gonna be a one team fight here for the Vancouver Titans. Fantastic, and it's been one of his strengths this entire season. Oh, Kevsta gets a better shockwave. And again, that beam doing so much damage when they get low. OG with the Primal Rage, knocking Kargar into the corners, taking him out. And that's so many kills, overwhelming aggression from the Gladiators. Despite the overtime, it is just futile. And the Vancouver Titans are going to be not too pleased, but the Gladiators certainly are taking map number one away from them. And build up your ultimate really fast. This is huge. Murdering's at an off angle here. It they looks like even, they don't even know. They haven't even spotted him. This is, okay, the, situa uh, the situational awareness of the extinct, extinct dodo, if I can get my words out. I can't. <laughs> There's a little hint for you. But that's going to be opening it up for Gladys. That is really quite confusing, John. He has his blade a lot sooner than Dalton does, which is kind of odd, actually, considering Mirror is on the attack. Might be opting to use it pretty soon. I think he's trying to bait out some of these cooldowns. And finally, Mirror's going to be using the blade here. Stunned up, bashed up, his team are keeping him alive and healthy, but he was just out of range, I believe, of that immortality field. And now this gives the Vancouver Titans plenty of opportunities to roll forward with ults of their own. KSA with a Gravitic Flux, pumped in enough damage necessary to close out this series, and it's just 
poor little Bob that they're going to be using to farm up their support ults. Again. Another ramp matrix, so this is getting better. A lot of ults though, and here comes the Gravitic Flux as well. The Gladiators carbonizing off of the aggression. The Titans too far forward, maybe. They thought it was easy for him as well. Especially with what you were saying there, Josh, because using the rally early in that fight, but now two ticks. Can anyone on the Titans even touch? One person managed to get on their car car, but he will meet his maker soon enough. Shredlock does have the Earth Shadow. He's got to go huge of it. No, sends it off onto the side. It connects onto nobody. And it is going to be an easy completion. The Gladiators getting three and a half minutes in their time bank. Okay, well. Ashton sliced through. It did a bit of damage. Dalton fell very, very low, but unfortunately not enough to bring him down. The Gladiators are caught. What is what this for? Bird this? Ring? Mirror with Mirror? two kills with the concussion from his mind. Okay, the Gladiators have turned that around. That was the amplification matrix from Shaz. They used it in close quarters, and I bet the Vancouver Titans, I bet they thought. Now being used by the Titans to try and lead and initiate in. It's going to mean the Gravitic Flux gets a ton of value. The Immortality Field keeps him alive, and Shockwave does take out Bob. Nice Earth Shatter from the side there. OG on 100 health. The tire as well. No one can stop it. Mirror with three kills. And that is going to be beautiful. Shockwave, I don't know why you're using your duplicate in that scenario, but Gladiators still holding strong here. It's not even final fight territory. I don't know why they're using these ults, but they want to try and turn it anyway. They do get a kill onto Mirror. And here we go again. Rolf is about to have another one online. He's probably going to go for the exact same play. Just post up at the Mega, pop the Amp Matrix, and try and shred OG. But they look like they're very aggressive here, the Gladiators. Done it again. Oh, what is huge. this? The aggressive Gravitic Flux is huge. Space with two kills. The Gladiators, they are just going to be sealing the deal. They were a bit annoyed that they had to get up early for this match and they won it over in as quick of a fashion as humanly possible. The bird rings back on the trace and we've seen what he can do on that hero. Well, this is good though, because the Bob is now gonna start contesting the card even further. The dynamite around the corner. It's gonna be taking a ton of damage. The coach guns pushing them away, but it looks like the gladiators are getting the better of this team fight. You see KSA went down pretty early on there. OG with the primal rage, great mechanics on Winston. And a role he's incredibly comfortable on. A little surprising as well, that's going to hurt them. It's going to literally buy so many seconds for the Gladiators. Look at this, man. They're just sending in everything to collapse onto the high ground. Now that's perfect synergy between OG and Space as well. And Birdring coming in for the cleanup too. This is the Gladiators with specific strats for point A on Anubis. Try and pepper them in the background. He's going to go down to the Dynamite, surely. Oh, I think he got the health back in the nick of time. Kevster, though, busting out the blade, missing a couple of swipes. Finally gets the kill, gets two more. I gets two in total. That is going to be more an easy zero. win for them. Look at this, almost five minutes. Yeah, and this is so clean from the Gladiators. It's... A lot of damage being set into them. Shaz being harassed in the backline. Has to use the Transcendence early. But might be able to make the most of it. He's still got that Discord Orb actually there onto Shredlock. So they were able to force out his Primal Rage whilst he was Transcendencing. Small little niche mechanic there and Dalton falling as well. Shredlock going down. Not an ideal scenario. Not the situation that the Titans wanted to find themselves in. And now Space. Gravitic Flux is going to be preventing them from even touching the cart. Three minutes, 45. Anyone? Okay. OG's going to be touching the point there. Pulling very low, though, so he's going to have to throw his body to the wind. Not getting any value really out of it. And they see night. Oh, my They, they, they just see night they and see use trance. Like, we, we were gassing up the gladiators, Josh. And like clockwork, it just... Yep. Just comes crumbling okay. down. All right. That, yes. That see if they can bomb? force out some more. Nice stick. Straight onto Shaz. Great target being found there. And of course, no Baptiste being ran, so there was no immortality field to save that stick. Bigger's gonna have to use the rally to try and engage or try and win this fight, but you can see a lot of ultimates being committed now by the Bank of the Titans. They want to try and seal this one. They want to try and win this team fight outright. They're gonna do just that. Gravitic Flux from KSA was more than enough to just slam in the damage and the rest of the team to clean up around. And then they lose point B and use Primal. Oh, and this blade. is all falling to pieces. The blade must be huge. Kevster must get value in order to turn this around. He's put in a lot of damage. And if they can pick up this kill onto Shredlock, then it will be a worthwhile blade. You can see Birdering trying to chase it down. Has to use his recall. 
opting to try and take down. Forwards here. OG's died with 88% towards his primal rage. Flux comes out from KSA as well. Oh, Big Goose no. has fallen. There is a transcendence still being used here, though. Oh, OG is going to be the last hope of his primal. OG has to clutch right now with his primal rage. He has to come up big. He's to try and pump in some damage, try and disrupt them if he can, but he's taking so much damage. And now switching over to the stall characters, the stall heroes. Space on the wrecking ball, but not enough. And the bank of the Titans. His roll out, the zippy little man. Oh, and the shockwave and Kaka have managed to get there. Gravitic flux onto the car. This is there, but this is too little too late, well, unfortunately. Immortality field. I don't want to call it just yet, because OG does go down here, but KSA falling means that that's probably going to be curtains. Only a few yeah, a few stragglers are left alive. Shredlock being the last one standing. He will fall as well, which means that the gladiators are going to get that hold just after that car wash section where the, the car... their high ground. But as it is, Dalton's done a very good job at holding strong. And now they're fighting over control of high blue ground. box. And Shockwave's gone down. Shockwave goes down. The Ant is going to get unleashed onto the high ground. But I don't know about that angle. They're just going to work a, a, around it, really. Just playing the line of sight. Gravitic Flux connects onto... Only the one target, but there's the blade from Kevster now. Rally going to be committed. Primal Rage just to stun up Kevster. Push him into the corner. Someone needs to touch this cart, though. It's dangerous scenario right now for the Titans. This is the series on the line for them. But look at that. The Transcendence gets committed here by Shaz. We're going to send it in. That's going to contest the point. No, Bob gets battered back, actually, by the Primal Rage. So they're not going to be there to contest the point, which means they have to play a little bit more forward. That gives the Gladiators a bit of an edge in this fight. Can they press the advantage? Can they get the win? Birdering popping off on the sidelines here. They have to consolidate. They have to find these pickoffs. Birdering again with another one. Kevster, the DPS duo for the Gladiators, coming up huge right now. Finding so many pickoffs. And with the overtime finally burning, eventually they will get what they came for. The Titans put up a good fight against the Gladiators. It was unfortunate, however, that the Gladiators team that showed up on that day were a team that looked completely different from what we had seen during the Summer Showdown. Showing the same aggressive play style which caused them to collapse and lose earlier in the season, they were able to refine their strategy to make it work. On top of that, the Gladiators pulled out some unique choice strategies which allowed them to capitalize on different points and setups throughout the series. The glimmer of hope came in the third map for the Titans as they were able to find momentum and force an extra round overtime. The Titans came out with a brilliant game plan in overtime to start contesting at the very last second in order to burn as much time as possible on the clock. With the Titans running a similar setup to what we had seen in previous weeks on Anubis, the Gladiators were well researched and prepared. They utilized strategies and positioning which caught the Titans off guard, ultimately leading to their defeat. Despite a hard weekend for the Titans, they won't have time to look back as the biggest test for them is ahead of them right now. The Titans began their weekend playing the defending league champion, the San Francisco Shock. You can catch that game this Saturday on July 25th at 12 p.m. Thanks for getting caught up with Titans this week. Be sure to come back here for more news and in-depth analysis of your Vancouver Titans following match weekends. I'm your host, Abby Sherlock, and we'll see you next time.